Okay, good day. This is dual enrollment pre-calculus. I am Mr. McCulley. This is lesson number 17, the unit circle. Let's get right to it. So today we're going to identify the unit circle and its relationship with real numbers. We're going to evaluate some trig functions using the unit circle. We're going to talk about the domain and uh, period to evaluate sine and cosine functions, and then we're going to use a calculator. Actually, I'll probably leave the calculator stuff for class, and it's fairly easy. You just type in your calculator and hit equal, so that shouldn't be too part much of a problem for you guys. So first thing we want to talk about is uh, how we're going to memorize the unit circle. And uh, it is one of the few things that I'm going to ask you to memorize. And we're going to have a quick little uh, quiz on it at some point uh, about the unit circle. But basically, the unit circle comes from two special right triangles. And those special right triangles you saw in geometry. And I don't expect you to have those values memorized at this point right now. But I'm hoping that this little refresher here will help you remember them. And then when we get to the unit circle and we get to the memorization portion, um, you will at least have an idea of where they came from. So 30, 60, 90 right triangle and a 45, 45, 90 right triangle. So let's just say for the sake of argument, and this becomes more clear here in the next slide, but let's say I make both of these hypotenuses equal to 1. And so using the special right triangles from geometry, it turns out, and if you'd like me to show you how I get these values, I can do it in class and we'll do it all together. It's real simple. But um, these values, if uh, this, one, this one is one, then the shortest side across from the 30 degree angle is going to be a half. And then this long, longer side, this longer leg across from the 60 degree angle is going to be square root of 3 over 2. In a 45, 45, 90 right triangle, again, because this is an isosceles triangle, these two values are the same. And with a hypotenuse of 1, you get square root of 2 over 2 and square root of 2 over 2 as those two values. Now, all of these values are, are basically the numbers that we're going to be using on the unit circle. So um, just a couple notes here. The unit circle. The reason they call it a unit circle is because it has a radius of one, one unit, okay? And so now that means every single radius is one unit long. And these one unit radii are hypotenuses of right triangles. And these, is these special right triangles that we have, all right? So you'll see these numbers, one half, Square root of 3 over 2 and square root of 2 over 2 happen often. Okay, They're going to be repeated. And those are just the numbers that you're going to have to, rem to memorize. So here is a sample copy of the unit circle. And I have posted a copy of the unit circle as a PDF, the, this copy, a nice pretty copy for you to use um, on uh, our, our Google Drive. So you can and get it there. There's also a... Uh, practice test and this is the the one thing that I'm going to ask you to memorize and so we're going to have a short test where you're going to have to complete all of these values all the way around and then we're going to have uh, you're going to have to give me the degree value the radian measure and then the X and the Y value for all of these values now you'll notice some similarities and things that are going to help you memorize this but it is vitally vitally important and I always have kids after we've done another chapter go oh, man I wish I would have learned the unit circle better it's vitally important that you memorize this this is your math facts for the rest of trig okay these are the math facts so like when I say what's four times five you say 20 because you memorized that value way back in in third grade that was your math facts you had to learn those things same things gonna hold true with tree here I'm going to ask you to tell me what is the sign of let's say 2 pi over 3 just real quick and you're gonna to have to be able to say well that's square root of 3 over 2 okay and we are able to come up with these values based on this unit circle now you're gonna see a lot of um, repetitive values. So you'll notice if I start at um, uh, zero radians here, I got uh, pi over six, I've got pi over four, I've got three uh, pi over three, I've got pi over two, two pi over three, three pi over four, five pi over six. Notice 
I got a pi over 6 here. I've got a pi over 6 here. I've got a 3 pi over 4 there. Pi over 4 there. I've got pi over 3 there. Pi over 3 there. Pi over 2. Okay? Notice, closest to the x-axis, pi over 6, pi over 6, pi over 4, pi over 4, pi over 3, pi over 3. So there's a certain pattern to these values. The values that are along the y-axis, pi over 3s. The values that are in the middle, pi over 4s. The values that are closer to the x-axis, pi over 6. And then it's just counting. All right? And you'll no also notice that in the first quadrant, both x and y are positive. So you'll notice that all of these x values and all of these y values are positive. All right? When you get into the second quadrant, the x's are negative, the y's are positive. You'll notice I have pi over 6. Well, the x value is square root of 3 over 2, and the y value is a half. When I talk about 5 pi over 6, the x value is square root of 3 over 2, and 1 half, just like they are over here, but because in the second quadrant, we're on a negative x, or the negative part of the x-axis, so the value there is negative, all right? And so we're going to use those, those relationships to come up with some values. Now, we also are going to see that if I have a right triangle where every single uh, hypotenuse is of value 1, then if we want to talk about our old Sokotoa, all right, in each of these instances, the hypotenuse has a one value, all right? And so what happens to that is whenever you have a fraction that has a one on the bottom, you're just going to write it as whatever that numerator value is. So what happens here is when I talk about the sign of some theta that's on the unit circle, it's the opposite side over the hypotenuse. Well, the opposite side in a right triangle that's on this unit circle is, and I'm just drawing this in here just for just to kind of show you, is the y value. That's that value. And so when you put that y value over 1, then it just reduces down to y. So the sign of a theta value is the y value at that angle measure. The cosine is going to be the adjacent over the hypotenuse, but the hypotenuse is always 1. So x divided by 1 is just x. So if I said, what is the cosine of pi over 6? Well, the x value is right there. And so the x value is square root of 3 over 2. So that is that value. Now, we're also going to talk about tangent. And tangent is sine over uh, cosine. And since we said sine was y and cosine was x, we can reduce this one down to just y over x. Now, we have some reciprocal trig functions. We have cosecant, secant, and cotangent. And they are just... Um, the reciprocal of the sine, the cosine, and the tangent values. They're just flipping those values. So if sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosecant is hypotenuse over opposite. If cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, secant is hypotenuse over adjacent. Please note, please keep in mind, that the reciprocal trig functions are not the inverse functions. So if you go to your graph and calculator, let's uh, continue to use this. Um, it is not the second function. You actually have to use the reciprocal values of that. All right. And so here we see some fairly simple basic trig functions and their relationships to the unit circle. Um, I also have on the Google Drive a trig identity cheat sheet. And so this is the first place that we're seeing this. And I have all of the trig identities that we will be using over the, the, the three chapters of trig that we're going to hit. So uh, the first chapter only deals with uh, these first, uh, the reciprocal quotient, um, Pythagorean and co-function identities, and the even odd identities. And they're going to learn all of them today. And so this just this portion is in this chapter, and the rest of it. it is in the second chapter. In fact, I'm going to let you guys print these out and use them on quizzes, not on tests, but on the quizzes. You'll be able to use this uh, trig identity cheat sheet. Okay, so let's let's get to how how do we use this thing? How do we use this? We we've been talking about this. Um, what we're 
going to eventually get to and why we want to learn the unit circle is because we want to be able to quickly evaluate some of these uh, trig functions. Now, sine and cosine are going to be very easy because they're just y and x. Tangent is the relation, uh, the ratio of y to x. So we may have to do a little bit of uh, extra work, but it's still going to be fairly simple. So when I say, what is the sine of pi over 2? Because on the unit circle, the sine of theta is equal to the y value at that point. If I go back to the unit circle, and let's erase some of this stuff that I've added on. I start at uh, the standard position and I open up to pi over 2. Now pi over 2 has an x and a y value. And it's, uh, I guess it's a little hard to see here. So it's 0 and 1. That is the x and the y value on the unit circle here. So since sine is the y value, at pi over 2, I look at that y value, it's 1. I just put 1 in right there. Now cosine of any angle is the x value. and We see that right there. So when I say what is the cosine of 3 pi over 4, I start at the standard position, I go up to 3 pi over 4, I look at that x value, negative square root of 2 over 2, and that is the value of this particular trig expression. All right, and again, these are your math facts. You want to be able to do this without having to look at the unit circle. That's the whole point of memorizing the unit circle so that you can go around in your head and do these. Now tangent is slightly more difficult and in this case we have a negative so we're going to be going clockwise instead of counterclockwise like we did in the first two. But if I start here and I go back, let's make sure I get it right, pi over 3. Let's say I go back pi over 3. So we go start at 0, we go negative pi over 3, we're at 5 pi over, over 3, so the values are the same. And so it's y over x. So I've got negative square root of 3 over 2 over half. So I'm going to go negative square root of 3 over 2 divided by 1 half. And the halves will cancel. But let's talk about it in terms of the division of the fraction. When you divide a uh, fraction by fraction, you multiply the numerator by the reciprocal of the denominator. So I've got negative square root of 3 over 2 times 2 over 1. My 2's cancel. I got square root of 3 over 1, which I'm going to rewrite as square root of 3. All right, so here's what I'd like you to do. I'd like you to look at your unit circle. I'd like you to press pause, and I'd like you to evaluate these, these ones using your unit circle. So just press pause right here and evaluate them, and then we'll go through it here as soon as you get it done. But try them on your own. Okay, I hope you press pause. If not, that's okay too. It's your loss. Uh, but the sine of uh, 2 pi over 3, if I go to 2 pi over 3, it's going to be square root of 3 over 2. Uh, the cosine of 7 pi over 6 is going to be right there. So the x value there is negative square root of 3 over 2. And then uh, 3 pi over 2, 3 pi over 2 is right here. The x value of or the y value of 3 pi over 2 is negative 1 over 0. And so here, one, negative 1 divided by 0 is undefined. All right, and that's a possibility. You can get some values that are going to be undefined. And when we graph them, you're going to get uh, vertical asymptotes. And we'll see that again. Uh, a periodic function. If f is a periodic function, there exists a real number c such that uh, f of t plus c is the same as f of t for the domain of f. The smallest number c uh, that makes that true is the period of f. And so let's think about it in terms of this unit circle. Okay. If, let's erase all that stuff. If I went around and I said I have an angle pi over 6. Okay. If I have a function that uses the unit circle, if I go all the way around, that's 2 pi, and then I say um, 7 pi, uh, I go another pi over 6, so 2 pi plus pi over 6. So 
the first one is just to here the second one starts all the way and goes around all the way to there that's those two values well the sine of pi over 6 and the sine of 2 pi and I won't reduce it although I suppose I could do it in my head fairly quickly um, these two values are the same and so for sine the period is going to end up being 2 pi. And again, if you don't believe me, you can go to your graphing calculator. Just make sure we are in radian mode. That's good. We can quit out of there. If I say the sine of, uh, let's see here, second pi divided by 6, I hit enter. And then if I go, which we know should be a half, dot Macaulay, right? So sine of, let me clear this out. Let's do it again sine of 2 pi plus pi divided by 6 we end up with the same value all right because it's gone all the way around the circle back to this original point and um, some even odd trigonometric functions so sine is an odd function cosine is an even function if you need me to explain that further i will in class but it goes back to the uh, how to find even and odd functions that we discussed in an earlier lesson uh, so if you need a review please ask in class well that's all i got for today folks so we are to the star wars fun fact of the day splinter of the mind's eye is a non-canon novel first published in 1978 originally uh, the story was written as a fallback plan for a cheaper film sequel to a new hope the original star wars was a lot of money and it was a big gamble and so if it didn't make as much money and they still wanted to do a sequel they were going to do splinter of the mind's eye but it was massive the star wars was massively popular and so they instead of doing this cheaper version that wouldn't have cost them too much to film they did the big spectacular uh return of the jedi well have a good day folks that's all i got Goodbye.